Welcome to the podcast, the Really Regular Guy podcast. I am your host, DJ, the Really Regular Guy, coming at you. Now, if you see me looking down, it's my first time recording one of these, so I was kind of looking at my phone. I got my little audio board here, um, just trying to make sure that... I got the little intro music in there. I don't know really what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, we're going to give this shit show a go. So if you're watching this on YouTube, which you probably will be, because I don't know when I'll be able to release it on the other podcast platforms, but that will be coming very soon, probably in a few days. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I just know I want to do a podcast, so here I am. So if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, uh, first off, if you see me looking down, I, I've nodded, not noted, noted down some notes so that I can remember a few talking points here. Because if not, I will just be rambling completely on, which I'll probably be doing anyways. Um, hopefully I get this video up. I'm shooting in front of a, a green screen right now, and I've never done that before, so hopefully... Uh, it doesn't come out looking absolutely ridiculous. But if it does, and I don't post it, you can still hear my beautiful voice on this lovely sound equipment I have going. I sound really good, don't I? So who am I? My name is DJ. I'm from Florida, Northwest Florida. Single parent. Used to be a correctional officer. Used to be in the military. Uh, and I've taken up a huge... I'm a single parent, but I've taken up a huge hobby of kayaking. So if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll see all kinds of videos of me and my friends kayak fishing. And it has been a game changer because I don't party. I don't go out and drink. I don't do anything. But going out on my kayak and going fishing or really just being out in the water, is just, it's just amazing. Um, so that's pretty much what. Yeah. All I do is I work, be daddy, try to work out sometimes, and go kayaking. That's about it. Uh, why am I starting a podcast? Well, I'm starting a podcast because, one, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately, and I mean a whole bunch. And I don't know. They're just easy to listen to. I, I like them. And a lot of times I want to make content. I want to make videos and stuff, but I really don't. Um, I, I feel like I don't want to make a video if I'm not doing something, you know. I don't want to make a video just sitting at the house talking on the camera, which is kind of like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> but it, I just felt weird if I try to do that. So I'm making this podcast for that reason. And, uh, maybe, you know, who knows where it goes, who, who knows if, if people like it, then, you know, I'll keep it going. Um, I would definitely just like to, I like to talk. I like to talk. I'm a people person. I like to be around people. So this is kind of my way of being around people without having to be around people. And that was the first failure. My phone was ringing. How nice. Okay, so back to the regular scheduled programming. I started the podcast because I just want to be able to talk. And uh, I really like the whole podcast idea. My profession, uh, at the moment, I'm working at a gun shop. I work at an amazing gun shop. It's ran by a man and his wife. Uh, he's... Uh, was special forces and um he's definitely a big part of the military community uh i need to quit saying oh so much but i work there at this gun shop and i'm training doing cerakote some aftermarket stuff to some firearms it's, it's something i really enjoy if you know me uh you know that i'm i'm really pro gun i really i love guns i love everything about them um it's just a it's just cool to be able to work in an environment to where I can see all kinds of new stuff that comes out and be able to learn about all different types of firearms. 
Uh, it's just, it's really cool. Um, my, oh yeah, I noted this down to talk about this. So if you're on my YouTube channel, you notice that, um, I used to use some specific music and I talked about this in my last video. I was using a, a, some music from a guy or from a company. It was like a domination or something like that. I bought a few songs from them to use and I bought the rights. Uh, that's what I thought I did anyways to use for some of my videos. So like I was using those and what happens is YouTube will give you a copyright strike and then you can test it. And the guy will, you know, over override that, that, um, copyright strike. Well, so that happened to like half my videos. And then I noticed the other half I wasn't getting, it wasn't getting overturned. And I, I hit the guy up as I, like, Hey, what's the deal here? And he kind of, it was some ring around the rosy stuff. And eventually I found out that, from what I understand that the songs that I was using for like my intro and stuff wasn't even his. So he didn't have the right to, um, override the copyright strike. So I quit using them and I started using a paid program. The paid program is cool. They have a lot of music on there. It's the epidemic sound, which they're great. Um, but I do notice that if you start with them, then all the music you use with their company, if you don't, continue paying like if you get to a point where you can't pay anymore uh they have the ability to put copyright strings on on every single video that you have their music in up to that point even to the extent of taking your videos down and your youtube channel could possibly be taken down uh due to that so i'm uh trying to figure out how to make my own music so i'm using garage band on my iphone and my, and my ipad uh anyways that was my little tangent about my music <laughs> So I guess I'm to the point where I want to figure out something to talk about in this podcast. And here we go. We all know what's going on in society right now. It's it's crazy. And I'm not going to go on no like political rant and, and say what's, what's good and what's bad. But uh, it doesn't take a blind man to see that things are in a bit of a fragile state at the moment. And there's violence all over the nation. Um, if you just heard that squeak, that was my super hardcore gaming chair that I'm sitting in. <laughs> but you know that our country is in a crazy state right now. It's really a big crisis. And um, there's rioting or shooting, all kinds of stuff like that. So something I wanted to kind of bring up was uh, what do you think when you think about protection? Uh well, I don't know if you're single or if you're a single parent or if you're married or if you have family or if you have other family living with you or whatever. Like, what do you think about when you think about protection? Uh, you think a baseball bat, think calling the police. I mean, it's kind of crazy right now because some places you can't even hardly call the police. And if you do, they're, they might not get to you for an hour or so. And in that, in that instance, uh, what do you do, you know? Uh, do you grab your baseball bat or your kitchen spoon, back everybody up in a corner and try to fend off any, any, uh, people that wish you to do, that wish to do you harm? Uh, I don't know if that's going to work, but maybe where you live, it may work. Um, my idea of protection, um, obviously first things first, if you can call the police, I'd call the police if you're at your house or whatever. Um, and my next thing is getting something to defend my family, which in, in, in my circumstance would be a firearm because <laughs> I love firearms and I have a, a few of them. Um, it's a bit of an empowering thing to be able to have something like that and know that you can protect your family if it came down to it. Uh, me personally, I have a concealed carry. I carry almost every day, everywhere I go. Uh, that way I can protect myself and who knows somebody else that may need protecting. Maybe I can do it. Um, I don't know if your state is a carry state, but if it is, do you carry? Um, it, I don't know how many people are going to see this because my, you know, my, my channel is very small and a lot of people, I don't really get a whole lot of views, but if you are watching this and you do carry comment below, like what state that you carry in, because I, I'm curious to see who all carries and what states. 
So if you're if you're not carrying, but you're looking to possibly get something to protect yourself, there's something you got to really do. And this is what I tell a lot of people where I work because uh, I work at a place to where there's a lot of first time gun owners at this moment. There's record breaking numbers of first time gun owners and people have never shot, not familiar with firearms, but they see a picture somewhere and they think, okay, maybe I want I want that gun. Well, what you need to do is one, not take anybody's word for it. Uh, cause basically firearms are like Nikes and Reeboks, you know, it just depends on what you like. Um, you might not like either one of them. So if you come to me and I say, oh, yeah, uh, uh, Glock, that's where it's at. You go to the person across the street and they say Smith & Wesson. And then somebody else says Sig. Well, well, they're all great options. But it depends on you and your comfortability. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you buy a firearm because someone said to buy one and you're not comfortable with it, you're not going to carry it. And you're probably not going to even try to train to use it. Um, so the best thing to do, the number one thing to do is go to a local gun shop wherever you're at and basically just hold all kinds of different kinds of firearms. Find what feels comfortable to you. And once you found that, stick with it. You know, get that. Um, like I said, this is for the first time uh, gun owners. Stick with that. Go train. Shoot some rounds through it. Uh, learn how to manage the recoil. Learn how it sounds, how it feels, how it shoots. Just get comfortable with it. Then maybe you can open the doors to other, you know, different types of firearms. But first, you just want to go out there and touch as many firearms as you can in a safe environment and see what's comfortable for you, you know. Uh, I really feel like this podcast is going to be very, very short. So bear with me. This is my first one. This is my trial. This is the tester because I'm testing it. And another question is, if you do decide to get a firearm, uh, will you use it if the need be? Because let me tell you something. Not everybody's going to stop if you pull your firearm out. That's not the case. Uh, not everybody's going to stop if you shoot them one time. It's not the case. Uh, the most dangerous thing you can probably do is pull a firearm and not use it. The way I see it, if I'm going to be pulling my firearm, I'm probably going to be using it. Now, there are, there can be a circumstance where you might not have to use it. Yeah, cool. But be prepared. If you do pull that firearm and you do draw down on somebody, be prepared for them to charge forward because just the side of a firearm does not stop everybody. <clears throat> it don't. And, heck, a lot of people can't shoot, so somebody might not be scared of that firearm. Just something to think about if you do enter that world. It's uh, There's a lot of responsibility, a whole lot, when it comes to owning a firearm. And I don't want you to think that my channel is just going to be about me talking about firearms and stuff. This is just one of the topics that I decided to talk about today because uh, it's something I feel like I can give some insight in to somebody that otherwise might not know much about it or might be interested in it. So changing that up, uh, my daughter, she's in first grade. It's completely a different subject. And she just started school. Um, and here in this area, the students have to wear masks, uh, obviously due to COVID. Due to COVID. Um, it's kind of funny. I was so nervous because they didn't have a traditional open house, you know, where you can go see your teacher or see your kid's teacher and you can go and be a part of that uh, and let your kids meet the teacher. They didn't have that this year. And it was even weird because I had to, like, stuff her school supplies, and it's taken a few days. You know, you put some in the backpack, and then you put some more in the next day. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get me a sip of that white tea. But anyway, so I think today she's just about got all her school supplies in. I know it's only Tuesday. But what was kind of crazy is she's in the first grade, so it's her second year in elementary school, and she had to take the bus to school, and I had no idea where her classroom is, and basically just sent her on her way. I mean, she did fine, but, you know, they have to, when they get on the bus, they have to have a mask on. They get their temperature taken, I believe, when they get off the bus, or maybe when they get on the bus, they get their temperature taken. Then they get at school, and they sit at these desks, and their desks have these little, 
like plexiglass dividers. So it's like they're sitting in a fish tank. I'm sure it probably feels uh, less personal um, connection with the teacher. I'm I'm sure, but uh, my daughter doesn't seem to mind, <laughs> and she has to wear a mask like all day at the moment. It's kind of crazy. They have to bring their own water bottle because they don't want to drink, obviously, in a water fountain where everybody's going to be drinking out of. So every day she brings her water bottle, and they let her take her mask off to eat, and that's pretty much it. They didn't have P- uh, PE yesterday. I don't know what they're going to do about PE. Uh, I really hope that they implement that because I feel like they definitely need PE. You're going to be sitting there in school all day and not go do PE? Uh no, thank you. No, thank you. If you have kids going to school, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I don't know how the other podcast platforms were, but uh, leave in the comment if your kid has to wear a mask or not and, like, what state you're in. Because I, I, I'm i curious to know what all places are requiring masks. And I'm I'm on the fence. I'm, I'm like, with it and against it because – you know, I have my, my grandmother here, and um, I, my grandfather passed away a few years ago, but I don't want her to get it. I don't. Me and my daughter, we're going to be fine, but I definitely don't want her to get it, so precautions are fine. Uh, do I wear a mask when I leave the house? Um, no. Should I? Maybe. Maybe I should. But, yeah, I would like to know your thoughts on that and if your kids have to wear a mask at school. Because I thought it was weird at first, but I see that I see the reason for the implementation of mask at school. So I was thinking about something. And I talked to my buddy about this the other day. I uh, I was watching I think a Joe Rogan's podcast, one of them, and he was talking about um, he had a guest on that was uh, speaking about how he goes and visits. I guess I'm done with that notebook. He goes and visits uh, indigenous people, indigenous tribe, like 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 places where people, obviously they're uh, hunter gatherers. You know they they live by the old way and they go, they hunt things. They they that's how they live. You know they just like live to eat and sometimes they fight each other and you know, other tribes whatever. But there are places like that still that that have very little touch with human with regular civilization. And I think they were talking about there was actually a group that in this last few years that actually had their first um, contact with regular civilization. And some of them, that when I was watching that, I listened to them speak about how these people live, um, which is very interesting. And it's just crazy to believe that here in 2020 there's still people you know living like that. But um, I, I was talking to, to my buddy Grant, and, he, and we were talking. The question I had and I wonder what other people think about this. Um, and obviously, I'm just talking to myself in this microphone. I'm not talking to anybody else. So kind of having a conversation with you, whoever you may be. Do you think that people that live like that in those indigenous like tribes or maybe I'm saying the wrong thing. I don't know. But it, you know what I'm talking about. These people that live out in that tribal culture and, you know, those people that just had their first visit with or contact with new civilization do you think oh god do you think that they go through depression at the percentage that we do so our society we have so much stuff and i feel like it leads to uh depression and a very high level because our society has so many things to think about like you want to have a good job right so that's pressure. If you don't have a good job, some it leads to some depression. A nice house. Do you are you embarrassed of your house? Do you not want nobody to see your house? That's something that, that, that can build on depression. Um, do you not have the stuff that you want to have, the material things that can lead to depression? Do you not have enough money after you buy those material things? That leads to depression. Do you not just earn enough money to be happy? Like there's so many things, especially with media and stuff, that can lead to depression and you're wanting to at the end of the day, there's so many people that want to kind of, even if you don't admit it and don't think about it, you do want people to look at you and think like, okay, that person's doing good. That person's doing great. I, I wonder if they deal with that on any level. Um, and I mean, I'm sure they, 
they they deal with depression like with a loss of a loved one or something like that. But I wonder if they deal with depression at the rate that we do. And I don't know what like sparked that in my mind, but it was definitely an interesting question that I had to myself <laughs> because they don't have nothing like we have. They just all they're worried about is eating and you know maybe reproducing and. <laughs> I don't really know exactly what they're worried about. I mean, from what I understand, they have a lot of fun during the, you know, they're, they're like, they wake up, they hunt, they bring home the kill. Maybe if they don't have a kill, they eat or whatever. Then they have fun, joke, and go to sleep and do it all over again. That's life. That's just what their life is. And our life is so much more complicated than that. So I I just wonder if they do if they deal with that. Um, man, I wish I had some more topics to hit to talk about because I would like to keep this thing going. And I don't have a timer, so I don't know. I wonder if I can poke my camera screen here. Um, let's see how long it's been recording. I have no I have no idea. Uh, twenty one minutes. So it's been recording for twenty one minutes. I'm impressed that I was able to let it drag on that long. Um, so this is my first one, and I, I definitely plan on doing some more. Um, I guess I got I, I to figure out a, a platform and see how people do it, you know. Um, some things that you should do if you haven't already, definitely follow my YouTube channel, Really Regular Guy. Um, my Instagram is really.regular.guy. Follow me on there and hit me up, man. If you have any questions or whatever, or any topics you want me to talk about, uh, DM me on there, and I'll definitely bring those to light, and they'll definitely give me a little bit more material to cover. Because if you could imagine sitting at home listening to a podcast, you can imagine starting a podcast. Like, where do you start? <laughs> it's weird. I just said it i'm gonna just do it because i've thought about it for a while and i already make videos so this can just be a, a, another add to it so here i am anyways my first podcast 20 something minutes long and i appreciate you guys uh for for tuning in uh, subscribe and i'll uh, be on the lookout at the popular podcast platforms say itunes um, no, whatever, Spotify, I don't know. I've got to find a company where I can push this stuff out and get to all those platforms. Yay. And I kind of figured out how to, figured out how to put some music to my, uh, on this little mixer I got. It's pretty cool. Yeah. There it is. All right, guys, I hope everybody has a great day. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe to my stuff, like the channel if you can, and I will be talking to you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.